Welcome to Frontline News from the University of Maryland School of Medicine News Center. I'm Larry Roberts. Coming up, probiotic protection and a landmark study will help protect children from deadly typhoid fever. But first, we're a step closer to COVID vaccinations for children. Following clinical trials, Pfizer reported that its COVID vaccine is safe and effective for young children. The antibody response, the immune system response to two doses of Pfizer vaccine given to children five to 11 year olds was essentially exactly equivalent to the immune response that 16 to 25 year olds made in their adult trial that was done months ago that led to the licensure for adults. Now they were given one third of the adult dose. For Pfizer, the adult dose is 30 micrograms and these children were given 10 micrograms 21 days apart. So it's the same interval, same two doses, but one third of the, the, the dose. With the advent of the Delta variant and a return to the classroom, infections in children are on the rise, accounting for a quarter of all new infections. You know, we've been waiting, for, well, studying and waiting for this day for a long time. And if we have a vaccine, one vaccine now that will be available down through all school age children, it'll, it'll go a long way to reducing the burden of the whole pandemic. A similar pediatric trial for the Moderna vaccine is underway at the School of Medicine. As part of that study, children were invited to share their feelings about COVID-19 through a work of art that they can see when they come in for shots and follow-up visits. The pictures portray a wide range of emotions and experiences related to the pandemic. That really brings out in them, you know, the ability to tell us what's worrying them or why they want to be in the study. Um, some of them have just had some, you know, great thoughts about how they're helping the other kids in their class and helping their brothers and sisters because they were brave enough to be in the study. And they know that hopefully when we get the results that that will lead to other kids their age being able to be vaccinated. Dr. Campbell says the FDA should authorize the use of the Pfizer vaccine in children in a matter of weeks, and approval for the Moderna vaccine could come by the end of the year. In our discovery segment, a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine proves that the only licensed typhoid vaccine for children is safe and effective. The University of Maryland School of Medicine Center for Vaccine Development played a key role in the landmark study of 27,000 children in Malawi, who received a single dose of the typhoid conjugate vaccine. And it showed that the vaccine was very well tolerated. We compared it to a meningitis vaccine that's used throughout Africa and the side effects were very similar. And just recently, and this is, is the publication, we showed that it's almost 85% efficacious from a single dose in preventing typhoid fever. Spread through contaminated food and water, typhoid fever is responsible for 100,000 deaths a year in low resource countries like Malawi. Children account for most of those deaths. And Malawi about almost a decade ago had an introduction of this particular strain of typhoid that then spread very quickly through the population. For decades, the CVD and co-founder Dr. Mike Levine played an instrumental role in developing typhoid vaccines and treatments. But the disease is becoming resistant to antibiotics and short-term oral vaccines are not effective for children. The typhoid conjugate vaccine is different. So the big advance here is that these typhoid conjugate vaccines are single dose, can be given to children as young as six months of age and have a longer duration of, of immunity that we hope will translate into a longer duration of protection. But our studies are still ongoing to determine that. In other news, a study by the Institute for Genome Sciences shows that eating yogurt with a particular probiotic strain may help protect against harmful changes in the gut related to antibiotic use. We did find that BB12 seemed to preserve the levels of short chain fatty acids, which are really important metabolic products made by the, the gut microbes. And the BB12 was also associated with a less severe disruption of the overall microbial balance following antibiotic administrations. And maybe just to put the study in context, antibiotics are known to disrupt the 
complex community of microbes that live in the GI tract. And that can often have functional consequences, one of which is diarrhea associated with administration of antibiotics. With all the marketing hype surrounding probiotics, Dr. Fraser says more research is needed so probiotics can be used clinically with sound science behind it. And that's Frontline News. I'm Larry Roberts. I hope you'll join us again in two weeks.